What is that draws millions of pilgrims from all around the world to Kashi? There are so many myths around it and there are so many realities around it. This truth has always intrigued me. When I see, when I hear about Kashi, one thing is very clear that there is something very exceptional about this place. In our tradition, this is the most significant place that a person can live and die in. What is the truth behind the legend of Kashi? They say Lord Shiva lived here himself. All this drew me to come to Kashi and spend time with someone who could unveil the realities of Kashi, who can mystify and demystify Kashi. One thing which describes him for me is that he's absolutely authentic. Full of energy, full of wit. On one hand, he's devastatingly logical. On another hand, he deepens the mystery of the whole world. He does not dissect it, but he makes it very approachable for you. Sadhguru, one has heard so much about this city since time immemorial. People have talked about the significance of Banaras. What is so special about this city? Also, one hears about the design of this city. There were some yantras and there was some thought process behind the city. Can you please elaborate on how this city was created and what is the significance of it? Yantra means a machine or a mechanism. Normally every machine that we build, we have built essentially to enhance who we are. So whenever you create a machine, you're taking a certain part of the earth. Everything that we have created is dug out of this planet one way or the other. When you take material from this planet, there is a certain inertia to that machine. So when we think of something that has to function for perpetually or for an extreme, extraordinary length of time, we want to create a machine which does not have this need for inertia. So we try to create an energy machine. This is what you traditionally know as, yan know as yantras. Yantras can be very simple yantras. A simple triangle is a basic yantra. Various types of arrangements can be done to build different levels of machines which will function for your well-being. So this kashi is a phenomenal yantra like never before or never after, to create a large human body, a magnificent human body which is… which doesn't have the inertia of carrying physicality with it, so that it will be on all the time and it can just download the whole process. Solar system is like a potter's wheel. Because it's turning in a certain way, this manifested this way. This is a pot that has been churned out of this potter's wheel of solar system. So it's all very related. The diameter of the sun and the distance between the sun and the earth is hundred and eight times. And within your own system, out of one hundred and fourteen chakras, one hundred and twelve are in the physical body. But when it comes to doing something, there are only one hundred and eight that you can work with. The other four will just blossom if you nurture the rest. There's nothing to do about them. So there are one hundred and eight systems of yoga to activate hundred and eight chakras in the body. The whole city was built like that. Because it's made of five elements and generally it's considered Shiva being a yogi and a Bhuteshwara, his number is five. 
So, they built it to the dimensions of five, the five crochets and the diameter and the radius of the place is five crochets. Like this, they built many layers. So, this is showing you the fundamental geometry of Kashi. So, uh, at the edge of the Ganga is where it begins and these circles describe the parikrama, the outermost parikrama, totally measuring to 168 miles. The city itself is built like this and temple is a smaller manifestation of that. This is the geometry of the original temple. It is absolutely complex, the core of it does not exist anymore. There are seventy-two thousand shrines the number of nadis. So they built seventy thousand and they created sufficient corners around, angles around to make it multiply itself into seventy-two thousand. So it is the number of nadis in the human body. The whole process is like a manifestation of a mega human body to make contact with a larger cosmic body. Geometrically, a perfect manifestation of how the cosmos or the macrocosm and the microcosm can meet. They created an instrument in the form of a city. To create a tower of light, to create a connection with the cosmic manifestation, and here we are, the microcosm, to connect these two things, they created 468 temples. Their uh, shrines, the basic temples are fifty-four for Shiva, fifty-four for Shakti or Devi. This is because in the human body itself we see that one half is Pingala, other is Ida, this is masculine, this is feminine. This is why Shiva being represented as half Ardhanarishwar, half uh, female body and half male body. So they created the whole city like this body and these four hundred sixty-eight came because for thirteen months in a year, in the lunar calendar, every three years there's an extra month. Thirteen months and nine planets into four directions or four fundamental elements. Five elements are there, we don't do much about Akash. Your physical body is seen as seventy-two percent water, twelve percent earth, six percent air, four percent fire, another six percent is space. So if you have mastery over this, all yogic system comes from an essential science called Bhuta Shuddhi. That means mastering or cleansing the elements within you. If you take certain mastery over your elements, suddenly you will see wonderful things will happen to you. I can show you thousands of people who walked out of their physical ailments simply because they do some simple Bhuta Shuddhi process. So based on that, they created this. Whatever we saw as Sapta Rishi Puja, in tandem, in four hundred and sixty-eight temples, these things would be happening and it would create such a phenomenal energy that everybody was longing to be in this place. And if you're born in India, your only dream is to go to Kashi. And it not only became a spiritual center, this was a center for music, arts, craft and a commercial center and an educational center. The greatest minds in this country came from this place. Albert Einstein said, the Western sciences, the modern science couldn't take a single step without the basis of Indian mathematics. And that mathematic came from this place. The basis for that mathematic is here. And these things, the yantra, the way that they created the city is so meticulous. Geometrically, mathematically, it's so perfect, so absolutely perfect that everybody wanted to be here because it created such a phenomena around itself. It's… it's a misfortune that we were not alive when it was in full glory. It must have been the most phenomenal place for it to draw people from across the world. People have been traveling here from across the world for thousands of years. Gautama came here to give his first teaching. The Chinese traveler who came after Gautama, he says, Nalanda University is just a small drop of knowledge that fell out of Kashi. And Nalanda University was, has, has still been recognized as the greatest place of learning. Not only of those times, they say even in today's world, 
you cannot compare in another university with this. There were thirty thousand monks studying in Nalanda and over ten thousand faculty, all kinds of subjects, every kind, eastern, western, every kind of subject. Mathematics reached its highest peak. All the people that you hear of, Aryabhatas and so many others, they all came from this region, all generated by the culture that was alive in Kashi. This level of intelligence and human competence came because of this instrument which allowed them to make contact with dimensions which are not usually available to a human being. It is not something that they logically thought up. They saw the existence the way it is. By seeing the nature of the creation, human intelligence matured in ways that nobody had ever imagined possible. Even today, it's in common language but they may not know what's behind this. They say Kashi is not on the ground, it is on Shiva's Trishul up there. Because they created a physical structure which in turn generated an energy structure and the energy structure is not on the ground, it is above. So because of this, they said, Kashi is not on the earth, it is above the earth. So it's because of that, that this whole tradition came up. If you go to Kashi, that is it. You don't want to leave the place because when you get connected to the cosmic nature, why would you want to go anywhere else? Oh, mm -hmm.